What's going on guys? This is Miasin. So this is going to be a split against uh, Mathmech, adding Nistro or pure Mathmech. Whatever, let's get right into it. Not even gonna waste any of your time. Who's gonna win the dice roll? God freaking damn it, man. It's gonna happen every single time I make one of these videos. Alright, Splite is gonna be going first. Um, I don't know if we can really say must be nice when your opponent has three hand shops with a one card starter. And an extender. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, yeah, whatever. A normal summon swap frog effect. Oh, that uh, of course resolves. You're not really trying to imperm here. Special summon the jet that will get hit by the imperm. Now you could like he could have went uh, into El Mirage and then revive back the Ronin Totin and then make gigantic splite to play around uh, Ghost Ogre. That would have been relatively good. Uh, so you play around Ghost Ogre and you don't lose that hard. To no, actually, yeah, you. You kind of lose a little, yeah, whatever. It's not that bad, that bad, but Ghost Ogre doesn't really see too much play, so it's not uh, the end of the world. Imperm is going to be used on the Gigantic Splite, which forces him to set an Imperm, still has an Ash in hand, and uh, that's about it. So he's going to be top decking another Ash for turn, not too bad. Uh, when I first met you, is uh, going to be met with Ash, therefore the Attic Nestor player really can't do much here. But this is going to be a really simplified game state, so the Gigantic Splite actually does resolve. I don't know, I find this uh, a little crazy, uh, to be honest. So the Splite Blue is going to try to search. That's going to get hit by the Ash. A, a little weird because he could have just Ash the Gigantic Splite, but I guess the only reason why he didn't want to do that is because he genuinely wanted him to be under the lock of Zeus. Otherwise, there was basically no way he wins. But now he can go into Splite Elf, attempt to revive back the Swap Frog. Uh, that's going to probably get hit by the DD Crow, except that it's not. Uh... It, it, Am I missing something? <laughs> yeah, uh, interesting. All right, uh, cool. So everything resolves, apparently. I don't know. I, I feel like I probably would have DD crowed the Swap Frog when he tried to target it with uh, with uh, the Splite Elf. M maybe there's something I'm missing. I don't There, there has to be something I'm missing, right? There, there has to be something I'm missing. Uh, unless I'm stupid. Whatever. All right, now he's going to try to revive back the Ronin Toad, and that's finally going to get hit by DD Crow. Does it really change much at the end of the day? Eh, not really, but I guess he gets an extra body. He can't make Zeus. So, you know what? His uh, timing of hand shops was actually correct, because ashing the Gigantic Splite means that he can make Downward and Zeus with four materials. You really don't want to allow that. And yeah, like, revive like summoning back another Swap Frog would have... Actually, yeah, uh, it would have allowed him to... You know what? In theory, he could have made it so that he wouldn't lose to Ash. All he really had to do was summon Swap Frog, send another Swap Frog, and then make the Splite Elf, try to use the effect of Ruin until... No, 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 actually, yeah. It would have been the exact same, yeah. So Ash and DD Crow was actually correctly used here. I guess maybe the DD Crow is a little debatable, but it really doesn't change much at the end of the day. Because whether you want to use it for the Ronin Toten or for the Swap Frog, target it with Splite Elf, just same shit, man. Anyways, normal summon a cheat sheet, that's actually ridiculously freaking good, but if you imprim that, I don't believe you can play too much. So he can still make a Link 1 play. Dark Infant and the DD Crew can't really do much here, so he's gonna be able to search the AI land. And now probably summon the uh, Doshin using its own effect, not really the field spell. There is no reason to do that. And he's gonna be uh, going for Splash Mage, obviously the target is gonna get hit by DD Crew. And he's gonna scoop it up because he cannot get over the Splite Elf, which can revive back whatever monster like Splite Blue and just pop off next turn. So that is way too much, and we're going into a game two where Adagnistra will be going first. I right, Deep Sea Diva, Splite Jet, Dark Ruler No More, DD Crow, Splite Blue. Dark Ruler No More literally does nothing, so that should have been sighted out. And then this hand is ridiculously unfair. Valor, Double Imperm, Achichi, and When I First Met You. Like, it literally doesn't get any better than this. Like, seriously, man. People on Dueling Book are freaking good. Anyway, search the Pikari, Pikachu, <laughs> make uh, the Dark Infant, I don't know, people never really try to search uh, uh, Pikari when I first met you with way with the card, so that they can search the field spell and play around Valor here, because this hand, even though it's actually pretty nice, it still loses like pretty hard to like uh, one Valor on the Dark Infant, unless you're playing uh, Doshin with the when I first met you, with a lot of people are actually not doing that because they're playing the Math Mech Adagnister. But the pure math mech deck, which I believe this is a pure math mech, really does play uh, Gachiri with uh, Denmari, uh, Doshin, etc. So yeah, now he's going to be searching the Doyon because he's revealing a dark. DD Crow still cannot really be used. You're typically trying to DD Crow the target of Splash Mage or 
I guess one of the targets with a uh, Dark Templar, but it really doesn't matter too much. And now he's going to be searching the Bur uh, Bururu. What the hell? No, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So recycle back at Chichi, search Bururu, and now make Splash Mage, special summon the Bururu. Uh, that's going to be uh, setting back the one I first met. That's freaking insane. My god, this card is really good. It recycles back a monster from the Grave to the Hand and a Spell or Trap card when it's uh, used as a Link material. Freaking busted card. Anyways, we will probably send uh, Danmari, that's an uh, Omni Negate, so why not? And, um, yeah, yeah, you can use the effect of Splash Mage, I don't know why he said you can't. So yeah, revive back the Picari. not even gonna be DD crowing that, goddamn. But I guess it makes sense, because you can still keep on playing. And now make the uh, Wind Pegasus at Ignister. You see how DD crow is just dog shit against this deck? <laughs> like, if you DD crow one card, you're not really, it's not really a choke point. Like, you can still keep playing if you have more extenders. So, uh, you know, when you have, like... A one-card starter, and then every single card after that kind of replaces a hand trap. Well, it trades for a hand trap. You, you know you're playing a deck that really doesn't care to, like, those kind of interruptions. Whereas a Veiler on the Link 1 could have been, like, a turn skipper if you didn't hard draw much. Alright, so this is actually a really cool play that you can do with Picari. Transform any other Adagnistra into a level 4 so that you can make the Alambertian. And that way you can get your Mathmech engine started. So never mind, I was incorrect, this is the Math Mech at Ignister. It just kind of threw me off guard that he played... I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I'm missing something. I don't really know why he's sending the Sigma, I think. The play is to send the Nabla so that you can have the diameter in, uh, you know, access. Uh, so I, I don't know, maybe there's something I'm missing. Anyways, the, it doesn't matter because the DD Crow is going to be banishing the Sigma. That is for sure correct because now you can't search the Super Factorial. And either way, you only have one Math Mech monster in the grave, so even if you hard draw it, it would have been a bad thing. I Transco Talker is going to try to do nothing because he's going to special summon the uh, Achichi first. Now revive back the Cyber Wicked, and that's going to be a very garbage arrival Cyberus for three. Not the best, but he still has done Mari in grave, and he has double Imperm with a Monster Reborn and a Veiler. So that's uh, four interruptions and a lethal follow up next turn. And uh, friendly reminder again that Dark Ruler is dog shit. You really don't want to sight in the card against Adding Nister, and you want to sight it out every single time. So Deep Sea Diva is going to get met with uh, Veiler. I don't know if this really makes a lot of sense, but maybe because if you let the Deep Sea Diva resolve, you can start applying pressure with Baron, which trades one for two. So you might as well make. Well, to be fair, it it, it doesn't make it, it. It ends up being the same, I guess. You're trading one interruption for the potential of your opponent summoning another interruption. Uh, we still have to worry about the Mari and the double Imperm, so whatever. It's it's not like it changed that much. But now he can actually apply a lot of pressure with the Carrot and Jet searching probably Smashers. Ah, alright, starter so that you can summon red. Uh, is there something I'm missing? I don't know, man. Smashers looks uh, pretty interesting here. You can play around the, the Imperm if it's not on Gigantic Splite. If it is, then shit. <laughs> but yeah, going to be summoning the Gamma... Yo, this is the kind of situation where Herald of Arclight looks really freaking interesting, not gonna lie. Or, I don't know, Yamatako Roshi off of Deep Sea Diva, even though he can't really do that. Or off of Needle Fiber, I guess. Uh, uh, that would have worked, but again, not, a, not everybody plays that. Now, for some reason, the Swap Frog is the monster that is getting hit by the Imperm. Which, again, I actually don't necessarily dislike, because he really wants to like let this guy be under the lock of... You know, Gigantic Splite, it, it's not bad, it's not bad, yes. So, it, it, at least Zeus is no longer an option. Again, I keep, keep on repeating myself. Now he's summoning the red, and the uh, well, that, that's actually completely useless, because the only interruption that was a monster was Valor, and that's already been used. <laughs> so that, that's why I kind of said, you know, Smashers would have been nice. Anyways, revive back the Swap Frog. That's gonna resolve, but uh, it's irrelevant, because he doesn't have any other frogs in Grave. So uh, that's a nice uh, freaking frog engine you got there. It literally does absolutely freaking nothing at all. Anyways, we're not done yet. We still have to get over this uh, arrival cyber. So now he's going for a second gi gigantic splite, which means that even if he imperms one of them, the second one can attack over, and that way he can actually play through technically two imperms because the carrot can also negate by sending the red. My issue with this is that he's literally not achieving anything. He's not doing anything at all. He's just trying to get over... A tower's monster. So you know if you've lost because... yeah. Oh, never mind, actually. He loses because Danmari also negates the first one. <laughs> Alright, so he dies and he's going to die in two seconds. So Imperm here. That's gonna negate and then he's just gonna let it resolve. Oh, no, sorry. that No, never mind. Yeah, he used Imperm again <laughs> before. <laughs> Alright, what, whatever. It doesn't matter because Wind Pegasus can just shuffle back the only interruption he has. 
And uh, that's a nice end board you got there, Effect Veiler with uh, Big Blue Eyes White Dragon Boy on field. <laughs> of course, this is going to be way more than enough to kill him in the Ghost Ogre, even if he goes and pass, doing nothing. Again, Dark Ruler, not much that he can really achieve. Like I said, there is nothing to negate because the end board doesn't summon any, like, threats on the field that can be negated that are already there. It's like Super Factorial that summons the Alambertian, uh, La Laplacian, sorry, while you play. So Forbidden Drop, sure, can do something, but not Dark Ruler. Anyways, who's going first in Game 3? <laughs> That's a rhetorical question. No shit, it's going to be Splite. This is an extremely fantastic hand. Anti-spell, Jewel, Smashers, Ash, Ronin Toten. Yes, I'm sarcastic. So, set two with the Ronin Toten, and he's going to anti-spell on standby. Ridiculously pathetic, because unless your hand is like literally Exodia, anti-spell, not the best against uh, Mathemic Adagnister, I'm not gonna lie. However, it does protect you from Dark Rule. Anti-spell is just bullshit, man. It should, it should get banned. A, 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 a side deck card shouldn't be this good. It shouldn't be a card that not only stops your opponent from using like their own engine cards, but also stops them from using cards that stop you. <laughs> it's like anti-spell is the kind of reason why Dark Ruler, Artemite Slay, etc. are just not even insta-wins anymore. I don't know, man. It's just, it's not that I want those cards to necessarily be insta-wins, but th this is like a true insta-win the majority of the time. Obviously, this deck can kind of do things under because you have a lot of extenders that are like monsters and stuff like obviously this hand sucks but <laughs> whatever you get the point uh, so yeah he's gonna get drooled here he can still kind of play so the if he carry is 2200 attack which means that he can jump over Ronin Toten and the reason for that is because addition uh, boosts by boost it by a thousand so now he's gonna go for the dark infant which is a very stupid move that makes absolutely no sense because he's under drool and now he goes for splash mage revive back the uh doesn't really matter because they're all different attributes. Make the Deco Talker Heat Soul, which cannot use its effect this turn. But again, he's gonna forgore for the second time that he is under Droll and his opponent is a little pissed. <laughs> uh, so yeah, obviously there's the Duel Logs and Dueling Book, which allows you to correct this illegal move. But in real life, if you draw a card and you shuffle your hand, you get a game loss. The reason for that is because you create an unrepairable game state where you are at fault. However, if you draw a card, you put it on the field face down and you didn't add it to your hand and you didn't even like you didn't even look at it then you don't even get a game loss you just get a very very small warning or something M maybe you might actually get away with not getting a warning if you look at the card and you try to get it into your hand and you remind uh, you remember very fast that this is an illegal play then you might actually get a warning but you still don't get a game loss the game loss is only when you shuffle your hand because your opponent can no longer really trust you on, was this the card you really uh, drew? Like, you might have, you, you could have drawn, like, the best card, and then shuffle back a Garnet and say, like, trust me, the Garnet was the card that I drew. Anyways, <laughs> Anti-Spell is going to not really hurt him, but he has the Deep Sea Diva, uh, which can be a one-card uh, play for next turn. So, the two Gammas are useless, he also has two useless cards that he can't use under Anti-Spell. His only interruption is Ash, but he knows for a fact that... Uh, he loses to Ash because the Deep Sea Diva is a top deck, otherwise he would have used it last turn. And he also knows for a fact that he doesn't have a single Splite Extender, otherwise he would have normal summoned the Ronin Toten, and then special summoned the Splite Extenders instead of setting the Ronin Toten. Yeah, so definitely gives a lot of information away, and because of that, the Deep Sea Diva is negated, and there's absolutely nothing at all that the Splite player can do. Meaning that Mathmech Adagnister takes this one on a very unfortunate Game 3 brick. So that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know if, if I should become a rapper or something. Because my outros are always this fast. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.